everyone. We are back in Central Park today. Uh, I know we walked in Central Park together not all that long ago, but today we're here for a little more specific walk. People all over the world recognize spots in Central Park even if they have never set foot in New York City. And that's because it is used in dozens of films and TV shows. So today, we're gonna to take a little walk and see some of the most iconic filming locations here in Central Park. So we are starting today actually just on the southeast corner of Central Park. You can see the green right over there. We are in Grand Army Plaza with the big gold Sherman statue. Uh, I know this doesn't look much like what people picture when they think Central Park, but technically Grand Army Plaza is a part of the park. Um, right across the street is the world famous Plaza Hotel. The Plaza Hotel is very widely used for filming in both films and TV shows. And what's kind of unique about the Plaza is They've always been pretty accommodating with film crews. A lot of times if you see famous buildings and hotels in New York City, in a film or TV show, what you're really seeing is a shot of the outside and then a soundstage. Uh, a lot of what you see filmed in the plaza or set in the plaza is really filmed inside the plaza. Uh, some examples of some things that were shot here. The latest adaptation of The Great Gatsby, the Baz Luhrmann adaptation back in 2013, I believe. The main characters all check into a suite at the plaza to escape the heat in Long Island in the summer. And that is a scene that is taken directly from the novel. In Eloise at the plaza, Eloise is a little girl who lives on the tippy top floor of the Plaza Hotel, and that's taken from a series of children's books about a little girl who lives at the plaza. Uh, in the comedy Bride Wars, the weddings uh, in Bride Wars are set here at the Plaza Hotel. The Way We Were, an older film, uh, Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford has uh, seen a pretty iconic scene here at the Plaza Hotel. Um, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. This is actually the main setting of Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. This is where Kevin McAllister famously checks in with his father's stolen credit card and manages to run up a room service tab that is well over $900. Uh, another film this is featured in that you'll hear about a little bit later on, because they shot in some other parts of Central Park as well, um, is It Can Happen to You, which is a comedy, I think it's from the 90s. It's Nicolas Cage and Bridget Fonda about a cop who shares his lottery winnings with a waitress in lieu of a tip. That only works out if you actually win the lottery. <laughs> uh, so they filmed here at the Plaza Hotel as well. But again, oftentimes when you see the plaza, in any of these films, what you are actually seeing is the interior of the plaza as well. Certainly in Home Alone too, I think all of the interior shots, except for the swimming pool, were actually filmed at the Plaza Hotel. Um, when Kevin does his big cannonball in the swimming pool at the plaza, supposedly at the Plaza Hotel, what you're actually seeing is the Four Seasons Hotel in Chicago. The Plaza Hotel here in New York doesn't have a swimming pool that looks like that one. So we will be crossing here. We're gonna be walking into this park entrance right up ahead. So Central Park is very, very widely used for filming. You'll see productions of all kinds in Central Park. Everything from little student films that are two college students and an iPad uh, to really big Hollywood studio productions where they have cameras and cranes and trucks and trailers all set up and all over a massive section of the park. Central Park is a great location for filming, not only because it is beautiful and iconic, recognizable, but also it's pretty spacious. Filming big scenes, especially big Hollywood style films, takes a lot of space. <laughs> You do have a lot of equipment and a lot of people. And Central Park is 843 acres. So it gives us a little room to spread out in here. We have a really beautiful day for walking and filming today. So in between stops, show you a little bit of the scenery, tell you a little bit about the park, but we'll mostly be sticking with filming and film trivia as we go through here today. 
We are walking right alongside the pond right now, southernmost body of water in Central Park. Oh, and speaking of filming, there's somebody filming something right up ahead. This looks like a smaller thing, probably a TV thing. And I think as a courtesy, I'm not gonna walk through what they're doing. Wonder if I can get around them. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so definitely a smaller scale thing going on there, but good example, like I said, you'll see all kinds of production going on in Central Park. Everything from something really tiny like that, that's just a few people, to something, if you did take my Central Park walk with me a little while back, you saw on Bethesda Terrace a really, really large production set up. And that was for an upcoming HBO show. I believe. So right up ahead is, uh, we're coming up on the left. This is the Gapstow Bridge, this arched stone bridge. The trees are starting to really fill in, so it's a little harder to see. I'll see if I can get you a better view up here. There we go. So the Gapstow Bridge beautiful, very scenic, a popular spot for people because if you stand on the Gapstow Bridge, you have a gorgeous view of the skyline. Um, but in the film realm, that is the setting used in Home Alone 2 where Kevin meets the bird lady. So if you are a, a fan of the film Home Alone 2, um, you definitely will recognize that bridge. That's where they meet for the first time. This actually is sort of her designated hangout spot throughout the film. Anytime he runs into her in Central Park, she's actually usually right around here. If not right next to the bridge, then right in this little area of the park. So we are walking north on one of the paths in Central Park. Our next stop coming up is going to be the Woolman Rink, the ice skating rink. And that's actually used in a few films, but really prominently featured in one in particular. And that's Serendipity. So Serendipity was John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale came out in 2001, I believe. And actually one of my favorite romantic comedies from that particular time period. Um, so in the story, if you're not familiar with it, these two characters meet by happenstance uh, trying to buy the same gift at Bloomingdale's. And, and the, the whole story is a series of them sort of accidentally coming back together. Um, but the Woolman Rink, which we're coming up here on the left features really prominently actually throughout the story after the characters meet and they go out for a frozen hot chocolate at serendipity which is actually the name of a restaurant uh, here in new york city they go ice skating at the woman rink the first scene is set right around the holidays it's winter time so they go ice skating here at the woman rink they both actually come back to the rink individually at different times throughout the story and then when they finally reunite after continually missing each other um, they finally reunite here at the Woolman rink so like i said does feature pretty prominently really throughout the story i'll give you a view of the rink here this is one of our two ice rinks in central park the other one is Alaska Rink. It's quite a bit further at the north end of the park. A lot of people would opt to use this one for filming purposes because as you can see, you also get some pretty nice skyline in the background. So there's the Woolman Rink down there. You can see that they've taken, taken the ice out. You know, it's May. It's not really ice skating time. Um, if you did see Serendipity though, 
You might be sitting here saying, well, hey, wait a second, this looks kind of different. It absolutely does um, for a few reasons. First of all, all along the edge of the ice rink in that film, there are these really brightly colored stars that are shown. It was a nice way of giving some definition to the space. The white on white doesn't give very good depth perception. Um, so it just kind of dressed up the space, gave it a little color, gave it a little dimension. I think there were some Christmas trees in the background for the scene set at the holidays. Now, anytime you see something filmed in New York City, oftentimes there's some kind of liberty taken either with the location itself and what it's used for or its proximity to something else. And in the case of serendipity, it's what the location is used for. Um, they show the characters here at the end and it's supposed to take place in the spring, probably about this time of year and they show this being used as a roller skating rink so that visually it's still pretty similar to what it was in the other scenes, people skating around even though it's roller skates, not ice skates. Um, historically, that is not actually what we do with this space uh, when it's not ice skating season. A lot of times they actually set up a small amusement park here. It looks like maybe that's not what they're doing this year, so we'll have to wait and see what it is that's actually happening with the Woolman rink. Maybe it will be roller skating just like in Serendipity. So a little bit more about the filming of Serendipity while we're walking over to our next location. Um, Serendipity was set in, largely in New York City, though there are some scenes set on the West Coast as well. Um, but a lot of the filming was actually done in Canada, which is pretty common. Um, Toronto is used as a, a stand-in for New York City often. Um, so a lot of the actual filming was done in Canada. The only things they filmed on location here in New York were things that really there was just no appropriate substitution. Um, so the Woolman Rink was one. They did film uh, a little bit at the Waldorf Astoria, very famous hotel in New York City. Uh, and they filmed at Serendipity, the restaurant. So consequently, their filming time in New York, because it was really only a handful of scenes, they were on a really, really tight production schedule. And one of the things that almost always happens if you're filming in New York, the second people walk down the street and they see the trucks and the trailers and the crew, they know something is going on and they wanna stop whoever they can find and ask, hey, what are you filming? Which is absolutely natural curiosity, but if you're a busy crew on a really tight production timeline, you don't necessarily have time to stop and answer that question hundreds of times a day. So on a lot of the trailers parked in the city, they actually taped up notes said, yes, we are filming a movie. It stars John Cusack and a British girl you haven't heard of, because Kate Beckinsale was actually not a household name in the US at the time. Um, and then it just said, please don't bother the crew, they're working. So maybe a little abrupt, but probably did the trick. And it was really very shortly after that film came out um, that between Serendipity and the film Pearl Harbor, Kate Beckinsale absolutely became a household name here in the US just very, very short time later. So we are heading now over towards the Central Park Zoo, making our way just over towards the east side of the park. We're gonna be walking through the InScope arch here. Lots of arches and bridges in Central Park, but this one is special because right here, the entrance to this arch, this is where the two bad guys, Harry and Marv, finally catch up with Kevin McAllister in Home Alone 2 after They've chased him through the brownstone over on the West 95th, I believe. Somehow managed to run all the way across Central Park. And they finally catch him here. The bird lady steps in and saves the day by throwing a bucket of bird seed over them. And the pigeons swoop in and kind of keep them, keep them held there until the police arrive. So we're right by the Central Park Zoo here. Central Park Zoo 
is one of the original parts of Central Park from back when it opened in the 19th century. But it wasn't a plan for Central Park originally. There wasn't, wasn't a zoo in the original design of Central Park. Oh, look, we've got a little performance going on here. She is into my eyes, born. She is into my eyes, born. While I'm waiting, while I'm waiting for my turn. Yay! I don't wanna in addition to lots of filming go on, on in Central Park, you'll usually also find somebody doing that. So here we are at the entrance to the zoo. The zoo was included in Central Park pretty much at the insistence of New Yorkers. They decided they wanted a zoo and people started coming here and leaving animals. Swans, some bears, and hey look, we got a zoo. So this is used in a couple of different films. Probably the most notable would be Mr. Popper's Penguins with Jim Carrey. And so for the purposes of that film, this is called the New York Zoo, not the Central Park Zoo. And in that he is trying to keep many penguins in a New York City apartment, which if you've ever seen a New York City apartment, it's a terrible idea and obviously wouldn't work out. So they end up coming here to the zoo. This is also the primary setting for the beginning of the film, Madagascar. Now, of course, if you've seen Madagascar, you know, no, it was not filmed here because it's animated. <laughs> but there are some very real features of the Central Park Zoo that were included in the film Madagascar. So it, it is very, uh, very familiar to people who have been here before. So one of the, the settings that they do use is right over here. So this is the sea lion pool. And so if you remember the little penguins in Madagascar, this is one of the areas where they hang out. And there's our sea lions swimming right there. You can maybe see them. They look like they're having a nice time today. Can't tell if those two are fighting or playing. Um, the other feature that's a very real feature of the Central Park Zoo that made it into the animated film Madagascar is straight up ahead, and that's the Delacorte clock. So if you have seen Madagascar, then you are probably familiar with when the zoo opens up, there's this clock going off, this bell being rung by monkeys at the top. So the clock is a little more animated <laughs> and has more moving parts, certainly. In, uh, in Madagascar than it does in real life. But this does actually move in real life. So when the clock goes off on the half hour, the animals around the base do move in a little circle and it plays music. It actually plays over 40 different songs. So we are heading over to the Sheep Meadow. Sheep Meadow, big grassy green space, very popular. You can actually already see it up ahead on the right, but big grassy green space, really popular with New Yorkers for um, sunbathing, for picnicking. It's starting, it'll start getting really crowded here on the Sheep Meadow because it's actually closed off to the public in the winter time. They let the grass rest for the season. So people aren't allowed out there. So once we finally get to the warm part of the year, when they open the lawn, people are very, very ready to get onto the grass. So it's called the sheep meadow because originally it was used for grazing sheep. And I know sheep in this part of Manhattan sounds a little bit crazy, honestly. Um, but in the 19th century, 
this was kind of the countryside up here. It was a little easier to build this giant park in Manhattan at that time because not that many people lived up here. Um, there were some people up here. There was some farmland. There was a small village called Seneca Village that was here in this area. And so there were actually people displaced when they were building Central Park, though not nearly as many as you would see displaced if somebody were to build something like this today in New York. So with this being primarily countryside up here, the idea of sheep grazing on the sheep meadow doesn't sound nearly as crazy. So all of this area here was the sheep meadow. And actually, in the 2005 film, Little Manhattan, which was uh, with Cynthia Nixon, most famous for Sex in the City, uh, the production team was hoping to bring in real sheep to graze on the sheep meadow, just like they would have when the park first opened up. And even though that was its original usage, uh, that was a hard no from the Parks Department and the Central Park Conservancy. They absolutely said no sheep in the sheep meadow um, because they weren't allowed to do that. Fortunately, by 2005, some pretty nifty movie magic available. They just set up fake grass on the sidewalks, like in this area, fake grass and sheep, and then used some digital magic to fill it all in and make it look like there were sheep all over the sheep meadow. So Tavern on the Green, which we're coming up on, it's right across the way here. I will get closer so we can get a good look at it. Tavern on the Green is featured pretty prominently in Mr. Popper's Penguins, which we talked about back at the zoo. Jim Carrey's character works for a firm. It's a real estate developer who's hoping to tear down Tavern on the Green. And that was actually based somewhat in reality. There was a a period of time where the fate of Tavern on the Green was relatively uncertain. It was actually closed for a number of years, um, but fortunately it is a pretty loved New York landmark and it did stay open and it did remain a restaurant. This is also used for a scene in the Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters. Um, so actually the Ghostbusters apartment building is really nearby and we will go see it in just a minute. But Louis Tully is eating here at Tavern on the Green and he is being attacked by ghosts that only he can see. Uh, it's a pretty great scene. Was filmed here in Tavern on the Green. And like I said, the Ghostbusters apartment building where Sigourney Weaver's character lives is also right near here as well. We'll be able to see it pretty well, I think, in just a minute. All right, actually, now you can see the top of it. There we go. Come around and see if we can't get a better view of a little bit more of the building. It's right on Central Park West, though. So pretty close by. 55 Central Park West, I believe, is the address of that building. And if you are familiar with Ghostbusters, as soon as you see the building and you see the top of the building, you're like, oh yes, of course, that's it. But I will say, I, I do find that people are often going and looking for it and not finding it. So here it is here, 55 Central Park West. So definitely, like I said, if you've seen the film, the top, should look pretty familiar. That wonderful Art Deco, you know, spiked looking top um, and that tiered shape going up. So I believe the story in the Ghostbusters is that the architect was holding secret rituals there starting in the 1920, in 1920. And that's 
how, how some of the plot elements came into being. Um, I think the reality is that building wasn't even finished until about 10 years later. Uh, but the other thing that throws people when they go looking for the Ghostbusters apartment building is that if you remember in the film, it appears very, very tall. It looks very significantly taller than the other buildings right in that stretch. And that was just done through some good old fashioned editing magic. Um, in in post-production, they managed to make the building actually look about twice as tall as it is in real life. So oftentimes I see people looking, walking up and down that stretch of Central Park West because they know the building is supposed to be right along that section and they miss it because they're just looking for something as tall as what they remember from the movie. Um, but that is it, 55 Central Park West. It was actually used um, in another film as well, pretty briefly, you have to really be watching to catch that it's the same building. But if you were a fan of the film Elf with Will Ferrell, that is where Buddy the Elf's father brother and stepmother are shown as living is at 55 Central Park West. They only show the exterior of the building once, I think. It's one of my favorite scenes, though. It's where Buddy's father is leaving for work for the day, and he's just outside of the apartment building. It's the one and only time I think you can tell it's 55 Central Park West. And he answers his cell phone, and it's Buddy, who he has just left minutes before, telling him that there is an evil monster in the corner of the apartment. And the evil monster is the radiator. In fairness to Buddy the Elf, if you've ever been in a New York City apartment with one of the old steam radiators, they do sound like monsters when they turn on. <laughs> they rattle and clang and hiss, and if you didn't know what it was, I think it would actually be kind of unsettling. So we are walking back across. Um, we are heading back from the west side of the park, really right back towards the middle for a spot I am guessing everybody is going to recognize. It is one of the most filmed spots in Central Park. I would say it's also one of the most photographed spots as well. Um, so I can, like I said, almost assure you, you have seen at least a photograph of this at some point. So we are coming up here to an area called either the mall or the promenade. You will hear both, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it is that spot I was saying just a few minutes ago is one of the most recognizable spots in Central Park. It's also the only straight line made by a pathway in Central Park. I think that's one of the reasons it does look so nice and so striking for filming is it's this dramatic, broad, straight pathway. Depending on the time of year, right now is definitely one of those times you can see there's some really beautiful flowers planted in this area. We've got some tulips over there. Got somebody playing the bagpipes, because why not? Um, but this is the start of the mall or the promenade. So, it probably already looks familiar to you, but if it doesn't, or it kind of does, but you're not really sure where you've seen it before, I'm going to jog your memory a little bit. Uh, so this is used in the film Kramer and Kramer, Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep, Kramer versus Kramer, sorry. Uh, this is used in the romantic comedy Made in Manhattan with Jennifer Lopez and Ray Fiennes. Actually an underrated rom-com. I enjoy a, a nice goofy rom-com from time to time and I do like that one. And they film here at the mall as well. Like I said, it is, it's beautiful. It's got this 
nice broad walkway and this beautiful canopy of trees. These are American elms on either side. And right over here, brand new statue was just put in last summer, summer 2020, the Women's Rights Pioneers statue. I think the great thing about this part of the park and what does make it really appealing for filmmakers is it really looks beautiful in every season and it looks very different in every season. Coming here at this time of year when you're starting to get the full kind of green canopy effect of the trees is beautiful. But because of the way the branches are on these American elms, it actually looks really interesting in the winter as well, even when there's no leaves. It's gorgeous in the fall when you get the colors turning. So you can get a really nice filming spot year round here. And I had said it was the only straight line in Central Park. And that maybe sounds weird, but I don't know if you've been paying attention to the route we've been walking, but it is pretty curving and winding. And that's generally the design of Central Park. The park designers wanted it to feel like a, you know, a winding, meandering nature walk, kind of like you could get lost here. They didn't want a lot of straight lines. People already walked on straight lines in the grid of Manhattan, but they made an exception here <laughs> because this is leading up to Bethesda Terrace, which the designers did consider the heart of Central Park. And they wanted this big dramatic buildup as they got here. So up ahead on the right, you're gonna to start to see this white structure up ahead. That's the Nomberg Bandshell. It is having a massive renovation right now. So I'll get as close as I can and I'll get as, as good of a shot as I can, um, but we won't be able to get right up close to it. And while the scene that was shot here is certainly one, not one of the best known scenes from this film. It is probably one of the best known films set in New York City. And that is Breakfast at Tiffany's. The iconic classic film, Audrey Hepburn playing Holly Golightly. And so you might be sitting here saying, when are they in Central Park? When are they at the Nomberg Bandshell? Actually, Holly Golightly isn't in that scene. It is, while it's a short scene, and maybe one that people don't think of right away, it's one of the scenes where you actually get the most background information on this character uh, that we've had so far. And this is when her husband, Doc Golightly, comes to find Holly from Texas and is so surprised to see that she's become this completely different person. And Paul Varjak, Holly's neighbor and friend, takes Doc Golightly here to the band shell and they talk about Holly. And the band shell is used very, very often for music. Um, that's actually where Summer Stage, which is a free summer concert series that happens every year in New York, that's where it started. It was just people playing here at the band shell. And it does have really beautiful acoustics. And there has been a band shell, though not that particular structure, really since the park opened up. So it is an important feature in the park. I'm glad they're doing a restoration so that people can continue to enjoy it for a long time. Can see people getting their wedding photos taken up ahead. Very, very popular to do that. It's popular to take your wedding photos here for the same reason. It's popular to film here. It's because it's beautiful. <laughs> Get great settings, great pictures. I have actually in my well, probably eight years of giving tours in this park, have never, ever, ever given a tour where there hasn't been somebody getting their wedding photos taken. And I am including January in that. All right, so we are walking under beautiful Bethesda Arcade. I'm going to stop for a second and show you this amazing tile work here. We're heading out onto the Bethesda Terrace. 
So this, I would argue, maybe other than the mall or the promenade, is, is the most recognizable thing. Again, I would, tough to decide between those two, but both of these are used very, very heavily photographed a lot. And this is used in a lot of movies and TV shows. So very prominently featured the angel statue here. The angel of the water statue is a really important symbol in Angels in America, which was a film that was adapted from a Tony Kushner play. Uh, this area here was the site of a big song and dance number in one of my personal favorite films that was set in Central Park. And that was the Disney film Enchanted with Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey. And that's when they're singing the song, That's How You Know. And they've rallied all these people throughout Central Park and they're singing and they're dancing and they dance in a giant circle here at Bethesda Terrace. This is also used in 27 Dresses, the film with Katherine Heigl and James Marsden. Katherine Heigl is the perpetual bridesmaid in that film. They have a scene here at Bethesda Terrace. If anybody was a fan of the TV series Gossip Girl, uh, there are actually several things filmed here at Bethesda Terrace for Gossip Girl, but I think one of the most famous is Blair and Chuck's wedding happens here at Bethesda Terrace. Uh, so definitely a famous scene. Um, the angel statue here should also be pretty familiar for anybody who is a fan of Elf. When Buddy and Santa are attempting to escape from the Central Park Rangers here in Central Park, and they've struggled to get the engine back on Santa's sleigh, the angel's pointy wing is actually the thing that takes the engine off of Santa's sleigh and forces them to run purely on Christmas spirit instead. So very famous spot here. And honestly, this is featured, this terrace is featured in more films and TV shows than I could possibly name right now. Um, so if there are things that I didn't mention just now, those were really just a few examples. And there are certainly more where that came from. I know that they also filmed scenes from Sex and the City here. There's a short scene from Home Alone 2 that's here. Um, I believe the first episode of the show The Amazing Race started here at Bethesda Terrace. I think there's something from Doctor Who here, something from The Avengers. Like I said, used pretty widely. And it is one of those really, really famous spots in Central Park. So we are going to head now over just on the side here over to the boathouse and then over to the conservatory waters to finish up. So even as long as we've been walking, just so you know, we've only covered a teeny tiny section of Central Park. Um, there's certainly more to see and there's even more filming locations. These are just some of the best known, most famous. So the little building you can start to see up ahead through the trees. Uh, we'll get a better look in just a minute. That's the Loeb Boathouse. You can see all of these little boats here on the side. You can rent these rowboats as we get into this season of the year. Take them out on the lake. And the little boathouse is called the boathouse because that used to be where you actually rented your boats. There are no more boats to rent there. It's a restaurant, <laughs> um, but a really nice place to go and sit if you wanted to eat in Central Park. And as far as filming goes, really famous scene shot here at the Loeb Boathouse. That was from Sex in the City. Um, this is between Carrie and Mr. Big. In one of the times they are not together, she's agreed to meet up with him for lunch here at the Loeb Boathouse. And he goes in for a kiss and she ducks it and they both fall in the water. While I wouldn't recommend taking a swim in the lake here in Central Park, I will say if you were to fall in and you aren't able to swim, you'd probably be okay. It's not very deep. 
the lake and the pond and all of the bodies of water here in Central Park are actually man-made. Um, even though they look very natural, they are not. So they're not particularly deep. And I guess if you really, really wanted to, you could go swimming in there just like Harry and Mr. Big. So we are going to cross over here, heading over towards our last stop, which is the conservatory waters. I'm going to go really quickly so this bike doesn't hit me. Conservatory Waters is a great spot, not just because it was a filming location, but just because it's a beautiful spot, it's a picturesque spot. It's definitely a destination in Central Park if you have small children, or even if you don't. And you are just an adult who is kind of a child at heart. I think it's really fun. This is where you can rent toy sailboats and, and have them sail on the Conservatory Pond here, and also the home of some famous climbing statues in Central Park, including Alice in Wonderland and Hans Christian Andersen. So this area is called the Conservatory Waters because according to the original plan for Central Park, there's going to be a big glass conservatory here with like rare exotic flowers and then just a little ornamental pool in front of it. And they never got around to building the conservatory. They did build the water. They built the pond. This is the part that's here. There's Hans Christian Andersen over there. That way. You go up, go up this path here. Follow the path up that way. Sure. You were close. Sorry, my inner tour guide. I see somebody looking for directions. I absolutely have to stop. Sorry for the interruption, everyone. Um, so this is the conservatory waters here. Um, as we get a little further into the season, this is where people will rent little toy sailboats and they'll sail them here on this water. The reason it's famous as a filming location, if anybody is a fan of Stuart Little, um, actually either the book or the films, uh, when Stuart develops an interest in sailing and, and competes in the sailboat race in Stuart Little, this is actually where that is supposed to take place. Stuart's family is said to live on the Upper East Side, which is just over there. Those buildings you can see in the background are part of the Upper East Side. And so Stuart comes and sails to victory here at the Conservatory Waters. And I had mentioned the famous climbing statues as well. One was Hans Christian Andersen, the one we saw back there, uh, the famous fairy tale author. And the other one is Alice in Wonderland. Alice in the Mad Hatter tea party up there. So we will finish here with a beautiful look at the conservatory water and you can see down into Midtown Manhattan. Thank you for coming with me today to see some filming locations here in Central Park. Hope you recognize some things from your favorite movies and TV shows. There are a lot of other places we can walk together, so make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Ring that bell so you get notifications every time we release new content. And check out some of our other cities and take more walks with us all over the world. We'll see you next time.